So we're talking about products today. I had to put on my black turtleneck so I can get my Steve Jobs on. And that is because we are gonna be talking about how to take an idea that we have had in our mind for several months, or for even some of you all years, and how we are gonna bring that to reality. So we're gonna be talking about product creation. If that is something that is interesting to you, then definitely stay tuned. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Get Out of Your Own Way and Start the Stationery Business. We are continuing on, this is actually part three of this series. So if you missed the first two videos, definitely go back because I have strategically put them in an order that is gonna really help you to first get your mind in order, second, get your back end and your details in order, and then we are gonna start getting into some of the fun stuff, the things that a lot of people think about when they say, I wanna start a stationary business. And so we are gonna talk all about products today. It is one of my favorite things to talk about. So first things first, I actually created a video back a couple years ago. It was called product, product creation video, and it dived into my six piece of product Product creation. We are going to be touching on those in this video, but I highly suggest you go back and watch that video first because this is going to kind of be like a next level of that video. I'm going to be elaborating a lot more in certain areas and really giving you some more tips, especially because I've learned even more over the years. So definitely make sure you go watch kind of that part one. And also, if you look down in the description, I have some freebies for you down below that you can check out. It is my product creation guide and my handmade evaluation guide. So these are going to really help you if you are first of all just wanting to create any type of stationary product but then also if you are wanting to create a handmade product and you really want to learn more about that process and what it entails those are both for free and they're going to be down below um, you just sign up and you'll get it to your inbox and then you can get those resources but I wanted to share that with you because I think when we start getting into product creation it can be very in-depth it can have a lot of steps included in it. And because we are all doing different types of businesses, it's going to vary. So I'm gonna to try to use a lot of different examples throughout this video that can cater to some of the different businesses. I actually did a poll a couple of weeks ago asking what are some of the types of products you wanna create. And I believe planners came in at 41% y'all. So almost half of you are wanting to launch planners. Journals came in pretty close under that as well. Planners and journals in a lot of ways will go hand in hand with a lot out of what we're talking about and then also stickers so we are going to use those as our examples today as we work through our six P's of product creation so the first part is probe and calculate Probing is essentially just you researching the market, researching your options and what is out there, and really getting an idea of what it is that you actually want. Before you can calculate anything, you have to actually know what you're trying to create. So that is gonna in include you getting inspiration from other businesses, possibly looking on Pinterest, maybe even looking at the store. You may look at some of the things you already own and kind of get an idea of what you like, what you don't like, what you wish was better, uh, and then what you feel that your audience would like as well because it's really going to be important so when you are probing you are really thinking about in terms of planners you're going to be thinking about the paper type the binding style the type of cover that it'll have is it going to be black and white pages will it be in color and really starting to get a feel for that there are so many different types of even binding style options so whether you're going to do wire o or perfect bound or spiral or a different type of coil or maybe you want the cover to be leather or hardcover or you want it to be clear lamination or discs, right? There's so many different options when it comes to binding and cover styles. And that's some of the first things that you might think of. You may want protective corners on there. You may not. You might want to have a thicker paper, paper versus a thinner paper. All of these things are what you want to start considering when you look at a product. And if you are a user of planners and journals, then you will have an idea of this. You can start to feel the paper and see what paper works best for you, what allows you to write smoothly with pens, and then what binding style caters to you. You know, what do you use in different situations that you prefer? Do you like wire O? Do you like more of a perfect bound, kind of like just your standard books? These are things you want to start looking into and researching to learn really what your options are in terms of creating something and then that will really allow you to pinpoint your research so you're not just kind of like all over the place with your ideas you have a very specific idea of what you want and I've worked with clients that have had a very specific idea you know down to like I wanted to be leather at cover I wanted to have gold coil I wanted to have this particular binding those things are important because it will also help you narrow down 
where you may get it made or what type of equipment you will need to purchase to make it. If you're looking at stickers, kind of the same thing. You know, what type of paper do you want? Do you want them to have foil? Some of them are on removable sticker paper. Do you want it to be glossy paper? Do you want it to be clear? There are a lot of different options as far as stickers as well. So really getting an idea of what you want it to look like is gonna be very important at this stage because it's gonna help you with everything else moving forward. And then from there, that will allow you to decide what you are going to need to do next. So in a lot of ways, when we're talking about stationery, at least here on this channel, we're going to be looking at it from in terms of handmade versus manufactured. With stickers, you can get them manufactured or you can make them yourself. Same with planners and journals. So if you decide that you want to go the handmade route, then for you, the calculations are going to include what it's going to be like for you to invest in the equipment you need of course you're going to need a printer you might need a paper cutter you'll need all of the different binding right depending on what you're doing um, if you're doing a hardcover you're going to need book board you'll need the actual paper that the pages are going to be printed on you will need uh, just different equipment to actually put the covers together and bind everything together so some type of binding machine like the cinch these are all the different materials that you may need if you wanted to hand make a planner or a journal in the same boat if you wanted to do stickers you'll be looking into a really good printer you'll need a machine that will allow for you to cut those stickers out if you're doing die cut or kiss cut either way you know you're going to need that unless you're going to be cutting them out yourself um, which is possible, but it could definitely take a while, especially if you are planning on having a higher volume of orders. So, you know, keep that in mind. So then investment might be like a cricket or a silhouette. And then you will decide if that is going to be the route you go. If you're like, okay, I'm going to make it, I'm going to invest in this equipment. If you want to take the manufacturer route, you may work with a company like Stationery HQ that allows for you to do planners and notebooks and a ton of other stationary products. Or you might even choose a company like Jukebox that can make your stickers for you. They offer die cuts as well as kiss cut stickers. And so you can really get an idea once you know what it is that you want to create then you can kind of weigh out your options. If you are on the fence and not really sure what to do as far as whether you should go one way or another. So of course you'll look into how much the equipment will cost you. I will go ahead and just say with stickers, you do not need to have a full cameo unless you need to cut something that is 12 by 12 size. You can get a portrait, which is a little bit more affordable um, or even a Cricut, you know, if you're more interested in getting a Cricut as well. And then think about it too, those machines can allow for you to make a lot of other products that you may not even be thinking of, which is nice as well. Like I've made journaling cards with those. I've made my own product cards, you know, packaging and stuff, which we'll talk about in a little bit um, it's just a lot of things I've made with it I've made tabs all of these things that could actually help you enhance the product that you're trying to create so the machines are a really good investment I think even if you don't end up making it yourself you can make things to go with your product and if you are looking into getting it manufactured then you can start looking either locally or overseas so it's really hard because people will always ask me you know, what is most cost effective? And that's how I'm gonna decide. And it's really hard to say that because every company is different, but even more than that, every product is different. So whether someone is saying, okay, I wanna make a planner or a journal, great. But if someone over here is saying they wanna do it with spiral bound and they want it to be a laminated cover versus someone over here wants it to be hard cover with a gold coil, those are two completely different prices. And then if someone is okay with paying the US prices, right? Um, US is always gonna be more expensive because it's domestic to us versus if you're going overseas, it's going to vary. And so if you are investing to go overseas, the biggest thing to keep in mind is that there will typically be a minimum order quantity when you are getting custom products like that. So it may be a minimum of 100 or 500. And with that, it brings the cost of the units down. So instead of something costing you maybe 10 or $12 per unit, it might cost you under $5 per unit because you're ordering 500 plus. So that's kind of to consider for overseas, whereas if you are working with a company here in the United States, like Stationary HQ, like I mentioned, is a good example. Um, it is gonna be pricier per unit, but you can get as many as you want. So instead, I might pay double that cost, but, or even more, but at the same time, I only can get five, or if I want, I can get 10, or if I wanna just get one. Um, so that is really where you'll have to weigh that out. Everyone's desires are gonna be different when it comes to this. So that's why I encourage you to really get out there. Alibaba is a great website to check out if you are interested in doing overseas. There are a ton of amazing companies on there that make 
the planners and the journals and the things that you possibly you know see on stores all of the time and it just comes down to your time and what is exactly that you want to do um i will have that guide down below for the handmade as well it kind of has a part in there talking about the pros and cons of handmade if that's something you are considering but really my biggest piece of advice during this stage is to calculate everything there's no need to spend a dollar during this stage and then same with if you decide that you want to make it yourself for me i make things myself but i always try to find a way to get some tip some sense of outsourcing happening so with my planners the way that i do them i like to get the pages print and cut from another company so i work with local companies in my area to get them printed so then that way when i get them the next step is just for me to punch the pages so that's one way that i save a little bit of time it is a little bit more expensive versus if i was to print it here at home and cut it myself but i'm willing to pay that expense because i know the pages are going to be pristine every time and that's really important to me so lots of things to consider this portion was a little bit longer because this will probably be one of the longest stages outside of our second one we're going to get into because you really really want to make sure that you understand what you want so when you get out there you're trying to explain it to people to get quotes from different companies you want to know exactly what it is that you're trying to achieve or well, hello i couldn't help but notice that you are watching this video and if you're watching this video then it definitely means that you are serious about wanting to start a stationary business this year i wanted to just let you know i have a ton of resources and tools and ways that you can continue to elevate this goal of yours and really make it happen it is one thing to just sit down possibly take some notes watch a video but it is another to take action so make sure that you check the description box down below to find out all of the different ways you can work with me and make sure you are on my email list because more exciting things are going to be coming very soon as well but one way is definitely going to be the membership if you are looking for a community of like-minded women that are not only doing stationary businesses but really just business in general becoming entrepreneurs in the midst of all of the things that life has going on if you are looking for that support in addition to trainings and calls to hold you accountable check out the inspire blueprint membership if you are looking for some self-paced ways for you to just hit the ground running and get started with a specific topic right away whether whether it be launching or email building or specifically making a handmade planner, definitely check out my course suite. And then another way for you to work with me, if you are looking for a little bit more one-on-one, -on -one, a little bit more getting to know on a deeper level, then definitely check out my creative chats because it is a wonderful way for you to get your questions answered. Pick my brain about all of the things that have been on your heart and in your mind that you are ready to really make happen. Cause sometimes we just might need that extra little step or that yes, or that thing to point us in the right direction and those calls will truly give you that. So I'm gonna let you get back to the video, but I just wanted to let you know that there are some extra things you can do if you are really ready to make this business happen. All right, so let's get back to the video. Okay, so this next part is planning and design. And this is such a fun part because I absolutely love design y'all, but I also know that this is one of the more involved portions of this process because it can take you, it, shoot, it could just take you a couple days, but it could also take you a couple of months to develop a design and figure out how you want it to look. So really when you are deciding this, really focus first on the planning part before you get to the design. So the planning is really gonna come down to a lot of what we said first when we were doing that whole probe and calculate phase, now you have an idea of what you want. The only thing you may not know yet is the number of pages that it's gonna be and possibly you know, black and white or color just depending on the design that you do. So really with this part, you want to plan it out. I love doing an outline. Uh, I have a spreadsheet that I usually will provide to clients where they can fill in exactly what it is that uh, they want for the pages inside of the planner or the journal. I have done design work for a lot of clients in the past and one of the things that is really helpful is to have some coordination with one another of what you want it to look like because it helps you know it helps the designer the more detailed you're able to be unless you really just want them to completely have creative freedom but if you know in the back of your mind you kind of have an idea this is a great time to sketch out those things create that outline and that gives not only yourself but the designer a starting point if you choose to go that route and definitely during this 
process, you want to make sure you are considering your audience, the end user of this product. Make sure that it makes sense. It flows with what their pain points are and how it is gonna help them get to what it is that is desired. So if it is a planner, we don't want the planner to be confusing. We don't want it to feel like it's all over the place. We want it to flow really nicely. So when you are in that planning phase, really, really think about that as you're outlining the pages so that you understand like, okay, first I want them to do this portion in the planner. Then I want them to move into this and then I want it to be this way. And this will also be a time when you might be deciding, you know, is it undated? Is it dated? How long, what is the length of time that the planner is gonna be for? If it's a journal, it's kind of the same thing. Is it a daily journal? Are there prompts? How many prompts are there gonna be? Is it for nighttime? Is it for daytime? These are all of the different details that will happen within the planning phase. And then with the design portion of it, whether you decide to do it yourself or if you work with someone, this is where you can then make that as visual as possible. So even if you kind of have like a sub design phase, I know some clients that have done this with me before um, that I've seen where they've already kind of created something. Maybe it's in Canva or they've designed it and kind of, you know, stapled some pages together just to kind of get an idea of the flow. I think that that is really a great way to do it so that you can make it visual for yourself as you kind of talk it through. Because sometimes in your head, it can seem one way. And then as you're trying to articulate it, it's like, what? So it helps to make it as visual as possible and you want to get to the sample so after you get this design even if the design is not a hundred percent perfect get to your sample that is one of the biggest tips that i will say out of this entire video that matters so much it can be very frustrating when you're creating a product it can also be exciting when you are creating something that has been in your mind and you get a chance to hold it in your hand for the first time y'all it is nothing like that feeling. And so I encourage you to get to your sample, even if it is not the final way you want it to look, I promise you there is nothing like holding something physically in your hands. And one last aspect of this planning and design process is that as you are doing this, you will probably start to get an idea of when this is gonna be ready. So even if you are doing it yourself or working with a company, there is gonna be at some point in this process where you're gonna get a date a date of when your equipment might be delivered right you know if you're getting stuff ordered to you know your um, binding machines and all that stuff like you know when everything will arrive to where you're going to be making them or if a company is telling you like okay our process right now it's six to eight weeks or it's three to four months whatever it may be depending on who you go with once you have that time frame that will then allow for you to say okay I think I can go ahead and set up to do a launch date on XYZ time. I always say to add a little bit of cushion, like, okay, if someone is saying the stuff is coming on January 1st, I'm not gonna launch on January 2nd, you know? So you wanna give yourself still even a couple of weeks beyond that, if not a little bit longer, depending on how launch or long your launch strategy is, to have that cushion just in case things are delayed, in case something happens, in case life happens. You want to have that cushion between when the things arrive for you to actually get everything together. And especially with handmade, even after all the equipment arrives, I highly suggest making some samples and really getting comfortable with all of the equipment and just getting your process down of how you want to make it before you just out the gate start making them to um, sell to customers. But yeah, get that timeline of when you wanna launch because that will be another motivator for you. But as you go through this process, once you get that date, keep that in the back of your mind. And then from there, you can start to have something to work towards. And you know, like, okay, I can't mess around. I know this date is coming up. I gotta keep it going. Packaging is always so fun and I'm actually in the process of redoing my own packaging for my business personally. So I will have some future videos coming up about that. But when you are thinking about your product, just envision the end product, you know, whether it is your sticker kits, your stickers, your die cuts, uh, your journal, whatever it may be, think about it in your mind. And then I want you to think about the customer's experience when they open up that package. How is the entire thing laid out? From the moment that it gets delivered to their house, what type of box or mailer is it in? What color is it? Um, is there a specific type of tape on there? Do you have any embellishments on the outside of the packaging that's letting them know where it came from? I think that's important too. So even if it's like the color of the packaging could be really nice or uh, just something to kind of add a little bit of a 
element to it when it arrives. And I love to for people to feel like something is a gift and get them excited. So right now my packaging currently is very basic because I simplified it down with me just getting back into my products again. But even still, when you get my package, there's an orange sticker on there that says Inspire Blueprint. So automatically it's like, oh, this is not just like something random, you know, this is from Inspire Blueprint, you know, so you get excited. Uh, really thinking about Happy Mail. So is this a luxe experience? Is it inspiring? Is it fun? Do you want it to be colorful? Is it neutral? These are all things to think of. Do you want a lot of gold involved in it? Do you want it to feel soft and chic? These are different ways you can start to describe how you want your packaging to look and it'll help you to know what you want that experience to be. So now, you know, once you know what you want it to go inside of, considering even the size of your product as well, then you can think about what it looks like once it's open. So when they open it up, you know, it's everything kind of in little separate plastic things. Is it wrapped in tissue paper? Is there a little product or is there a little thank you card in there? Is there a QR code that they can scan so that they can connect with you further in some way or get a little bit of a deep dive on the product that they purchased? Is there a way to connect with you after the fact? Do you have a sticker in there? Is there a freebie that they get? One of the tips for this that I will share is if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette, like we mentioned, you can do your packaging with these machines. I love to use my machines to help me with packaging and having a really great printer helps as well. You can do your own stickers. You can do your own cards that go inside of the orders. You can even purchase a corner rounder, you know, if you want to round the corners on the thank you card. These are things you can invest in and they will literally help you with so many aspects of your business. I love creating my own packaging, but I also love to work with companies as well. So even if you don't wanna make it, Vista, Vista Print is one of the first companies I ever used for my business cards, stickers, um, I did a lot of, uh, quite a few things through Vista Print, and I think it's a wonderful company, especially if you're not sure. Moo is another one. So I will have a couple linked down below that are great for packaging. No Issue Tissue, they're another one that does like custom tissue paper. And I've also seen some fun videos floating around of just ways that people have shared of how you can customize right in your house. I've seen where someone actually did something just recently on a video I saw. I'll try to see if I can find it. It was like just in my For You scroll page on YouTube, or they basically took their sticker paper Paper, they flipped it on the back and then they printed the logo on the back first so that way if you flip it over you see their logo I'm like that is brilliant that's such a good idea so there's a lot of ways you can customize without breaking the bank and still really giving that experience that you want and I will be sure to link one of I have a couple of product packaging videos so I'll be sure to link them as well in the description but I know I did share like an Amazon faves at one point too because I get a lot of my business packaging stuff all of Amazon from the tissue paper to the clear bags to the bubble mailers the boxes um, shoot the packing tape a lot of things I get off of Amazon and it has really helped because you know it gets to you pretty quickly so even if you're like in the midst of doing orders and you run out you know you can get it pretty quickly the stuff is really good quality and you can get a decent amount for really good prices and just remember at the end of the day even if you're looking for inspiration or you see other businesses that have done these different great packaging ideas remember you can keep it simple you can always add things later you know it's like you want it to be an experience but you also don't want to lose all your money on the packaging either so something as simple as just a really cute tissue paper and a sticker goes a very long way pricing okay so we're moving right along and now we're getting into pricing pricing is one of those things that can feel both intimidating but you can feel excited about it and then you can see what someone is charging and then you feel intimidated again or you feel nervous about the price you want to charge Keep in mind that it is going to be relative to who is buying it. So I have literally seen sticker kits that have cost $5. I have also seen sticker kits that have cost $50. I've seen planners that have cost under $10. Shoot, $3, $4 sometimes, especially like if you go to like TJ Maxx or something like that. And then I have seen planners that cost like 70, 80 bucks, y'all, okay? So you have to first understand your costs, how much everything is, whether that is the tools and equipment and the time that is invested if you're making it, or if that is a company you are working with, you need to factor all of those costs in, all of the packing materials, the shipping materials, it all needs to be factored into the cost of the product. And then the second thing you need to consider is your customer. If you have a more luxury product, 
then you can charge, you know, upwards of those higher prices because that is the type of brand and that is the experience that you are creating. So you need to understand both of those things first. It's important to know how much money you are spending on things because you don't want to charge too low and then you're losing money. And then you also want to understand, okay, this is my customer. Can I get away with, you know, charging this price or will this come off too low? And this is really where it can be a little bit of a playing around. So I know for me over the years, I have always really stuck to learning about the psychology of numbers, first of all, with different prices. So, you know, like with numbers ending in seven versus numbers ending in nine, um, I will link an article down below or a couple articles that I've read over the years that have helped me to understand the psychology of buyers. But seven is one of those numbers that when you see it, it just automatically appears like it is a little bit less. So that's just a little bit of an example. But you know, when you, even like with Walmart, like they have their stuff, it ends in an 88, I believe. So when you see those things, mentally you'll feel like, oh, that's a little bit less versus if something is just $50 or if it's 49.95. It'll feel a lot less because of the way that it's priced. But when it comes to how to actually price out your products, knowing that cost is important and then understanding what you want your markup to be, meaning how much more you want to charge over that cost. So over the years, I have seen a lot of people, they'll do a 50% markup. And a lot of times for certain products that works well for me, but I typically even go over the 50% depending on what it is. So if we're looking at, for example, if there's a sticker kit and I know that it costs me a dollar to make this sticker kit, let's just say maybe the sticker kit is three pages and it costs me maybe, we'll say $1.50. It costs me $1.50 to make it. That includes the three pages of the sticker kit, a little bit factored in of the ink, um, and then the clear plastic sleeve that it goes in, a little sticker that I made, and a bubble mailer. Let's just say that's what it kind of includes, or one of those state flat mailers. Let's use that. If you have that, and you're knowing it's about $1.50 for you to do that entire thing, you could easily say, okay, I'm gonna charge $3. But when you factor in the amount of time that you're spending on this and that you want to make it worth your time, I would even say take it up another notch. So even times that by three versus by two. So that allows for you to have a little bit more profit margin. And in case, let's say maybe the product doesn't do as well, at least you're getting a little bit more money back. You really have to think of it in terms of your time and just the income that you want to make so that you have more money coming in versus trying to keep it super duper low. So if I know that it costs me $1.50 and I'm like, oh, I'll charge $2, well then what happens when I want to do a sale? So now I can't really go on sale more than like 10 or 15% because I'm already right at cost. And with some products that is kind of, it, it happens, especially like for me, I know I run into that a lot of times with drop shipping products because they are very expensive. They're not so much stationary products, but that's when I typically find that it is hard for me to um, charge the amount I really wanna charge because they're already so high up there. And so it really, it really factors into now, it's like, okay, well then is this the route I wanna go for making it? So to just sum this up and tie it up in a little bow, because I could talk about this all day, Look at the market, see what people are charging. Again, keep in mind though that it's the pricing is relative because it is gonna just depend on what platform they're selling on, you know, who um, is purchasing their products. There's a lot of factors that go into why other companies price things the way that they do, but use that just to get a starting point and an idea. Think about what is your end result of how the person is purchasing it. If it's gonna be at a market versus if it's going to be purchased online, that really will matter because if someone is paying shipping, they may not want to pay as much online versus you might be able to charge at an in-person market or vice versa. Or if it's wholesale, if that's the case, then you know that, okay, if someone is gonna be purchasing a minimum of 10 units from me, then in order for me to make any money from this, I would at least need to charge X, right? So these are things to consider when you are looking at that. So, and then finally, just deciding what will work best for your audience. Playing around with prices, you can always change the price later, but just remember if it goes on sale, you don't wanna lose money. You don't wanna lose money anyway, but you wanna give yourself that cushion for if you ever do want to do a sale, if you wanna do some like a promotion for the holidays, or if you wanna have it discounted when it first becomes available, remember that as well because you'll lose money from those things so always think about all of these different moving parts and the factors when you are pricing it but at the end of the day pick a price go with it you know if it is not working lower it a little bit poll people and get an idea see what people are already paying for products like this 
and just you know go for it get your feet wet with it there's a whole psychology behind it and how to specifically price it out i've definitely helped a lot of people with how to price things but a lot of it is just trial and error you know and testing it out I always used to be nervous about this, but as time has gone on, I have started to understand that people will pay for quality. They'll pay for what they want. They will pay and put their money with a company that they believe in or a person that they believe in. So that really goes back to that branding and building that audience trust as well. People are gonna put their money with you if they believe in your business, whether it is $100 or if it is a dollar. So it's important to remember that as well when you are getting these prices in order. The next one is photography and video. I love photography. I used to actually have a photography business and of course y'all know I love video. I mean like boom, we here. I highly suggest everything that I've talked about in this video that you are documenting along the way, getting photos as you open up your sample for the first time and a video of you opening it up as equipment and your tools and things are coming in as you are testing different things out. Maybe you got a new printer and you're testing out the printing document that process because all of these things can be shared with your audience as you are building trust and in your launch process any everything is content okay literally everything that you do in this process is content so i first want to just say that is to get all of the photos and the videos that you can along the way of just this behind the scenes as it is happening your raw emotions your feelings your heart behind it all of that will be captured as you share this process but then the other part of this and a very important part of this is the actual product, how it is being photographed and getting video of it as well. We are now in a very video driven world. So just as much as it's important to get those really good high quality photos of your product, it is just as important to get video of your product as well. Anytime I'm doing a photo shoot with products, I always have a shot list and that shot list will not only include the basic pictures and things that I want to get, especially for like my website. Like I always love to get like a bird's eye view down, creating a flat lay of some sort. So I'll have just the product by itself and I might line it up with a color, couple of other coordinating items that match. It might be things I find from around the house. It may be things that go along with other items from my shop. It just really depends. I will link a photography video that I did a couple years ago as well for you to check out. I think I have one or two of them on this channel. But all in all, you want to find props and things that will match your product, match your overall business vibe and bring those into the photo shoot. Find some really nice backdrops. Hobby Lobby has a great section for this and I'm sure there's probably some of some other craft stores, but I've seen them at Hobby Lobby, but even the dollar store, like those really big poster boards. But if you can, I would say invest in one that's a little bit more higher quality than like the little foam board because like the one from the dollar store, because it dents really easily and I don't want you to have to keep going to the dollar store and buying some. I had a really nice one for years that I got from Hobby Lobby. It was basically like a thick foam board, but it just was very, very durable. I've purchased things that I can roll up and it looks like marble when I lay it out, but it's just a little roll and it's made out of something wipeable. There are tons of amazing companies now that have come out to give you the stuff that you need to, you know, create like a light box for your products. So some of these things are more investments that you can make, but you can keep it very simple. But the point is you can use a smartphone camera if you don't have a DSLR that will get you some high quality product photos to start. You can also hire a photographer as well. There are lots of product photographers that will help you to get these products photographed in the way that makes sense. But you always want to get those nice clean and crisp photos with just a white background. This way people can fully see the product. There's no issues. They completely understand what's going on. Another thing I like to do is create Another thing I like to do as well is to create mock-ups. These are digital mock-ups that I'll create either in Illustrator and sometimes even on Canva. And it is created right on the computer, but it's still showing off the product. I do this all of the time. I do this all of the time with my stickers, especially because sometimes I don't always have them printed out and ready to go, but they're designed. And so I have a very nice little drop shadow on a rounded rectangle. I drop the design on top of it for that sticker sheet. And then I'm able to put that onto the website as the product image. So that is even another great option. I've done that with my planners as well. So you can create digital mock-ups for your products 
even if you don't have an opportunity to do photographs just yet. But I do suggest as you are doing all of this, that video is incorporated. So, you know, doing some flip throughs. I love doing silent flip throughs where I just kind of flip and do each page and then there doesn't even have to be any talking. It could just be with some music, right? And you can speed it up in the editing process. You can have video of you panning over the top of it. You can have it of you um, doing like some staged packaging, like, you know, you're packing it up or you're opening it up for the first time, getting all of the details, you know, like your coil and the quality of the print on the stickers and the velvet smooth paper that you've done your stickers on. These are all things that you can do. You can have the video of you peeling the sticker off and putting it on a piece of paper, putting it in the spot on a planner, putting it on a journal page. These are the things you want to capture. And if you are already in that mode of photographing, it's like you might as well get the video too. So this is important. You can then of course use that for your website photos, your product page photos. You can also use it for endless content on your platform. You can also use it for endless content on your social media platforms. You will not regret getting videos and photos of your products. And at the end of the day, like you never will have a shortage of that. So the more that you have, like there are things I'm using, even in these videos, this series, pictures and videos that I took years ago, I'm able to pull them in for this video. So you never know what you could use it for. So just have it, you know, just take the time out for it and you can use it for marketing and launches and the background on quote graphics. Like there's so many things you can do with this. So the last part we're gonna talk about is provide. And I have a little acronym that I created called FBI for this and it is your features, your benefits and intentions. So features off rip, that is visually what people see. First look, we see the material it's made out of. We see, you know, how durable it might be. Um, if you're touching it, you know, like if it's soft to the touch, we get all of those features. And this is really where you want to think about how you can really emphasize the features you are most excited about. So if you have a gold coil, you know, like really emphasizing this beautiful, warm gold coil or this velvety smooth paper that they can write on or this really nice wipeable cover whatever it might be you want to emphasize those things and make sure that they are some of the main features that you talk about when you are promoting it they are the main features that are kind of up at the top of the product description in your website these are what are going to be kind of like your sellers the things that people see and they're like oh, okay i kind of wonder like what's that cover made out of oh it's made out of a really nice linen cover or okay you know i get stickers all of the time but what is the paper of this oh it's made with this waterproof sticker paper so no matter what you do if you want to put it on your water bottle if you want to put it in your planner you know it's going to hold up no matter what these are going to be some of the things that help you sell it the benefits this is when we're taking it a little bit deeper with your customer pain points and thinking about how this is really going to help them in their day-to-day -day life what is inside of those pages in the journal what is the process of them using this product that is going to be the benefit to them you know if your audience struggles with finding time for themselves and you have a self-care journal what is the benefit of your journal going to be for them finding that time for themselves? You know, um, there are so many different ways that you can think of benefits. And I've talked a lot about this within the content. This is really where that's going to come through and shine is in your content, really putting an emphasis on the benefits and speaking to the pain points and providing value to your customers in a way that will be like, oh, they're like in my head. They kind of understand what I'm going through. through. They get this. I think I want to try this product out. It seems like it might be a good fit for me. And it's just as simple as, you know, if you're struggling with finding time for yourself, this journal is going to help you because it will only take you three minutes in the morning before you start your day off. It is laid out very strategically to help you touch on the three areas. And I'm making this up, y'all, to touch on the three areas of life, your gratitude, your heart and a prayer for the day or, you know, something like that. Um, and you can make it so that it caters to the pain point when you are selling it, when you're talking about it. And when you are talking about that subject matter that might not necessarily be the product, but it's very directly tied to the product and connecting with what the customer is struggling with. So really think about the benefits and as much as you can incorporate it throughout your content.
And then the last one is intention. This is really going to be you explaining how it is intended for them to use. People love to have an idea of what they can expect with this product because it's one thing to just purchase something, but to just have an idea, you know, even if it's even something that is within the planner or the journal itself could be great too. I love to include something interactive when people purchase my planners and I always have a site on my, I always have a page on my site that allows them to watch some extra content around, okay, these are some tips on how to fill out these pages. This is a little bit of a suggestion on what you can do here. And that just gives that intended use, but really giving them an idea, okay, like what can I do with this? I purchased this sticker kit. I have this kind of planner. Can it work for any planner? You know, you could literally show that, okay, this kit was designed for any planner. It's not specifically just for one, like here's how I'm using it over in this type of planner. And this is how I'm using it in a vertical planner. And this is how I'm using this sticker kit with a planner that is just undated and it's daily. You can show that in different ways so that people can start to see themselves using it even without having it. And it just gives people kind of that gray area sometimes when you purchase something and you're like, okay, I don't know what to write down. You wanna remove all of the barriers that will allow people to actually use your product. And then from there, if they wanna use it in a different way, that's fine. Another great thing is even like showing routines around using the product. So um, again, with the stickers, you know, if you have a Sunday planning routine where you sit down and you pull out your sticker kit of choice for the week, showing that in different things, even if it's like every week you have like a post that goes up on Sunday and it's like, okay, here's my Sunday sticker kit. This is my layout. These are ways you can show that intended use. They're like, oh, okay, I see her using that kit. I think I might get that the next time I'm on her site. Um, I really like the way that she laid that out. These are different ways that you can start incorporating it. So FBI, don't forget it. And that is really how you're going to provide them with this experience and understanding of why they need this product. You know, during your launch, that is what it is all about. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you stuck around to the end, I know this one was a little bit of a long one, but all of these are a little bit lengthy because I'm here to provide y'all with the information you need so that you can get out of your own way and start the stationary business, okay? We are doing no excuses this year and I wanna really, wanted to lay it all out for you as much as possible. So I've been really trying to do the chapters in these videos as well. So if you need to come back and revisit certain sections, it's not like you're trying to figure out where it was. It's very organized for you in that way too. But for the bonus, I wanted to just share, this is just simply me giving you a little bit extra of how you can talk about your product. So, you know, I'm sure you've heard of elevator pitch in business where, you know, it's basically something very quick. It's usually 30 seconds, not really much longer of you just kind of explaining who you are, what you're here to do, what your business does. And it's just very to the point. So we are going to do the same thing with your product as well. If you have done all of these steps successfully, or at least thought through all of these steps successfully, then this part should not be very hard for you. All you are doing is just creating one to two sentences that is explaining your product. So all that you're going to do for this little quick formula is you're going to put your product name, helps, whatever your audience is, to and then you're gonna put in the action that you expect them to take. And then the second sentence is going to be, it features, and you're gonna do three different things that it features. So this can come directly from the FBI that we talked about. It features a small size so that it can fit into any size, or any size bag. It has a wipeable cover, so it's very easy for me, like I say, if it's for moms or something, you know, it's very easy spill proof if there's kids around. And then it is undated so that in case you miss a day, you know that you can always pick up where you left off without the guilt. So you don't have to say that though, but it might literally be like, let's just say for example, the, the Inspire Blueprint Planner helps, the Inspire, the Inspire Blue, sorry y'all. The Inspire Blueprint Planner helps female entrepreneurs to organize their business and their life. And then I might say it features an undated calendar. And then for the second part of the sentence, I can say it features an undated calendar, a durable coil, and a hard cover. So something like that. Very simple. I was able to say that and shoot literally probably like 15 seconds. And it's something you can memorize. You can talk about it all of the time on your you know, like if you go live or if you're intro into a video or if you have it kind of as like a blurb that you put on just certain posts, maybe you don't have really much to say in the caption, but you have that little product elevator pitch you can include. And another thing I think would be fun too is to create some kind of tagline for the product as well. So if you have like something fun, like for me, one of my taglines for the 
planner is, um, you know, your accountability is here or meet your new accountability partner. And I'm talking about the planner. So something like that you can do to just kind of help, you know, but stickers like elevate your planning experience to the next level, make it, um, you know, get back to the, get back to the fun of planning, things like that. Think of fun little catchy taglines that can help as well. And that just adds more personality to the products. It makes, again, people be like, oh, I think I might need it. I'm looking for some accountability in the new year. And it just, adds to the experience of what you are trying to create. I have been talking for a very long time, but I truly hope, and I see that the light from the window is starting to catch up to me. So I'm gonna go. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you made it to this point in the video, definitely comment down below. My product is on the way, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.